before it gets cut off. We look like that farmer couple in that picture. Okay. We need a big pitchfork. Picture, that's the one. You get me. Figure out what we can apply towards the current debt to avalanche our way out of it. Right, because we have- or a snowball? A pack of snowballs. It's a hybrid. A pack of snowballs. <laughs> okay. So let's figure out how we can pack a snowball out of this debt. Let's sled dog out of this debt. <laughs> Sled dog. That's our approach. <laughs> I'm writing that down. Let's center ourselves. I'm centered. That kind of centering too. Hi, welcome to the channel. I'm Andy. I mean, I <laughs> <laughs> hello, welcome to the channel. <laughs> We're talking about money and we have to be serious. Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Erica Lucas. I'm Andy Lucas. I'm going to recap for you why we are talking about money and uh, kind of a summary of the first three videos that I did about minimalism and money. An update on our debt payoff, how we align with Dave Ramsey's baby steps. The one habit that we feel has accelerated our debt payoff and share a money class that I took and a plan for our remaining debt. At the beginning of the year, shared three consecutive back-to-back -back videos <laughs> <laughs> about money. Andy was deployed at the time and I was responsible for the money in the household. We were not keeping a budget. When Andy's responsible and it's his turn for money, he actually keeps a budget and tries to make me accountable for my spending. And before minimalism, I didn't understand the importance of that habit. So kudos for you for trying that before I understood the importance of managing your money and um, having a, a positive relationship with money. One where money doesn't have the power over you, you have the power over money. And that is what we are changing in our life. I had a shopping issue that drove up our debt and I, begin, I began to address that in the first three videos when I was decluttering and understanding where all the stuff came from and took a look at the credit cards and the loans and the cars and yeah. You hey, I, I spent plenty too. I okay. went out and bought expensive cars. I, only, I spent my money on less things, but more expensive things. That's true. That's the, yes. I've also curbed that habit. I don't buy cars anymore. Uh, in the first video, I talked about addressing the issue and just put it all out there. In the second video, I announced the number. It was $60,592 in January of 2020. Did you know it was that high? Uh, I, no, not until you said it. I, I, I don't know what I would have guessed. I would have guessed somewhere along around like 30 to 40. Really? Yeah. Wow, it's twice that. So, mm -hmm. um, and in that second video, I also talked about the advantages of a debt snowball versus a debt avalanche. I will use our January figures uh, as an example to tell you why we chose the way we did. So in January 2020, we had $60,592 in debt, $8,700 in credit card debt to one credit card that had a 29% APR rate. We also had a second credit card to the tune of $23,000 at 11.4%. Loan for uh, about $5,000 at 9%. Uh, two car loans, one for 1,700, the balance was 1,700 at that time for 1.7% APR. And then our newest car at $21,000 at 3.1%. The debt snowball has you pay off the smallest amount first. So it would have us pay off the Toyota, then the loan, then Chase credit card, then the Kia car loan, and then finally the credit card. The debt avalanche has you pay down by interest rate. So you pay down the Chase credit card, the second credit card, the loan, the, to the Kia, and then the Toyota. We, we took the avalanche-ish approach because I never tell the line on any definition. So <laughs> we paid off the Toyota that was a snowball approach by paying off the smallest amount. You get um, psychological wins yeah. by paying off a small and amount. that one was easy because it was nearly done anyway. Right. And so by paying it off a small amount, you then take what you were paying to that uh, creditor and roll it, you snowball it into the next payment. And started tracking every dollar. 
and budgeting for everything. Started canceling subscriptions, selling things. And in two months later, we had paid off $8,000. So we earmarked a part of our tax return and paid off um, the Toyota and made um, a little bit higher than normal minimum payments to the credit card and the loan. And brought us at the end of March, we were at $52,479. That was the last update that I shared. In March. <laughs> in March. Okay. Way in which we gained some momentum to get $8,100 paid off in two months. We sold items, I meal planned, I budgeted, we skipped dining out, we canceled the car wash subscription, uh, we lowered the heat, at the time it was winter, we stopped the kids' 529s, which are their college savings funds, we stopped putting that, we stopped putting money into that in Temporary. January. Temporary. Right. Mm -hmm. And then we use part of our tax return. Those are the ways in which we grabbed $8,000 at the beginning of year and put it immediately towards debt. We also took a thousand of the tax return and put it into savings. We did not have a savings before that tax return. I mean, there might've been $3 in there, seriously. And it was never a priority. All of our money went to buying stuff or paying our debt and or paying your regular monthly expenses. And we didn't prioritize moving money into savings and taking control of money. We let we, money had control of us. Mm -hmm. We sold the Pennsylvania house. Mm -hmm. We sold it for a profit. A sizable profit. The market is in favor of sellers right now. It is a seller's market. I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, hopefully not long because I'd like to buy another house soon. We gained significantly more equity on that house because of the increase in house value uh, due to the, the market. Um, significantly more than I would have expected. The houses we sold together, we've taken hit on. So uh, the, the Virginia house in the Virginia Beach house. That was your house. I know it was my house. <laughs> but we, were, we were together. We were married when we sold it, so we sold that house. Okay. And then when we sold our Northern Virginia house, we took a hit. Yeah. Oh, that one. Not a big hit. Yeah. But what about a, that house? It hits a hit. It was a couple grand. And uh, who's got a couple grand to just give away? Yeah, you don't. Yeah, no, we like, certainly so, didn't at the time no, as well. No, that, that's. That's part of the reason why savings was at three dollars, right? Because things like that, you can do a, a savings account, and that's why you have a savings account. But uh, we let it, we let a lot of things eat into that account, and uh, we weren't able to recover for a while. Right. So what did we do with the profits? We moved half of it into savings. We used five thousand dollars. Well, we earmarked five thousand dollars for our first Lucas family vacation, of which four thousand. <laughs> It's going towards the rental of an RV yeah. and 1000 is going to gas and incidentals. Yeah. It's, so it's going to be more than 5000 at the end, but we'll try to minimize yeah. how much more. Gas will probably be more than 1000 Yeah, maybe. Maybe. We'll see. And the rest we used on our debt. We paid off the credit cards entirely. Mm -hmm. $27,000 of the remaining credit card debt is gone. Both credit cards are down to zero. Mm-hmm. Hello, we paid off $38,000 in debt, like. Yeah, we did. Doesn't that feel amazing? Yes, it does. We wouldn't have been able to had we not sold the house. Not in one year. But we it were, would have taken but us we were, years. But we were trending towards it. We could have been debt free in, I don't know, five or six years. Mm -hmm. yeah, I feel like there should be streamers and balloons. Yeah, so that leaves us with confetti. what? Confetti. So that leaves us with the, U here? the USAA loan, which is pretty low. And the Kia. $22,423 remaining. And, and 18000 of that is a car loan at 3.1% interest. Yep. So that's that's awesome. The the USAA loan, it was just a personal loan we took out. I don't even remember specifically why we took it out. I don't remember either. Um, Isn't that terrible? But uh, I think we probably took it out for home renovations or something. I don't know. Uh, but we took that loan out. Um, is it 9%? So... Not an awesome rate, but for a personal loan, it's probably pretty decent. Uh, so, but we're going to get that. Now that's our highest rate, so that's that's the next thing we're, we're jumping at. Uh, $3,500, so we, we should be able to get out from that relatively soon. And then a, a car loan is a car loan. Um, we'll probably pay extra on it, but it's a low interest rate, so there's no rush to get it paid off quickly. So I'm really glad you just said that because I want to talk about doubling down on payments. From this point forward, we are in a position to double down on payments and get rid of that faster. We chose to move a bunch of money into savings account. 
the $22,000 remaining in debt. Dave Ramsey, if I called into his show right now, Dave Ramsey would say, move that money out of savings, move it to debt, get rid of it, and then start working on repopulating your savings. Because baby step number two is to get rid of your debt, then start saving. So we are not necessarily following Dave Ramsey's seven recommended baby steps, but we sort of align with them. Um, so baby step number one is to save $1,000 in emergency fund. We did that in March. Yeah, and I, I, would, I would like to keep more than $1,000 in emergency fund. Uh, it's 2020, right? And there's still two months of it left. We don't know what's gonna happen. Right. Uh, the murder hornets weren't as bad as we thought, um, but, but everything else was, was pretty darn bad. So uh, $1,000 may not get us through uh, and emergency funds may not get us, get us through the rest of this year. And and hopefully when January 1st hits, everything fixes itself. <laughs> In the world, I mean. Yes, hold out for that. <laughs> See, baby step is number two is to pay off your debt except for your mortgage. Number three is to have three to six months of an emergency savings fund. Our monthly expenses right now are at about $6,500. And that is all in. I'm talking groceries, rent, diapers for the youngest, all of them. Every penny we spend is about 6,500. At the beginning of the year, we were almost at 10,000 a month, which is not the income that we had. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what was going out was greater than what was coming in. And now the reverse is true. What is coming in is higher than what is going out. Mm -hmm. And that's the scenario you need to have to get out of debt and have money in savings. Mm -hmm. So yes, we were unbelievably blessed with the sale of the house and having a profit. But I think the one habit change that I made that you tried to make and I just didn't take to is tracking every dollar. I think that is the trick, the habit, whatever you want to call it, that hurled us out of debt. Mm -hmm. Because once I started to pay attention to how I spent money, how he spent money, just the way our money went out and how it was going out at a higher rate than it was coming in, that one thing was a game changer completely. Mm -hmm. And here we are 10 months later, $38,000 less in debt than we were 10 months ago with still 22,000 to go. That, that house profit was a blessing. I, I, I call it a mini windfall. It's not really a windfall, uh, but it's a significant amount of money for us. Um, but had that not happened, uh, our habits have adjusted enough that we would still be making significant progress. Baby step number four is to invest 15% of your income into retirement. Yeah, probably not. It would be amazing to get to that step. We have an amount in retirement assets. Um, it's greater than zero mm -hmm. and is less than what we should have. Mm -hmm. um, were we to both retire right now, uh, between my pension and our retirement assets, we could live, but we would have to change our spending habits yet again. Um, it would be, it okay. would be very difficult. Um, it would be super tight. Mm -hmm. It would be very tight. Um, yeah, big major lifestyle changes. Yeah, yeah. a so, lot. So it's a good thing we're not retiring yet. Because then we couldn't even do step five, which is to invest in your children's college education, mm -hmm. which we've restarted doing. Mm -hmm. So we restarted the 529s. We paid off the credit cards, we moved money into savings, and we restarted the 529s, and then we rented the RV. Those were the actions we took when we had that money because we already knew what we wanted to do mm -hmm. um, and what our priorities were. And so we've restarted putting money into the kids' college funds. So we align with baby step number five. So... Are we doing them in order? No. Are they financial goals? Sure. And we are kind of hitting them in our own way. Number six is to pay off your house early. We're renting. We intend to buy again. Right now, especially if we were to buy in this area, it's pretty expensive here. We could never do mm. that. Um, Annapolis is crazy yeah, expensive. Yeah. Um, we, we, we are probably pretty close to our limit for what we would need here now. Um, at a 30 year mortgage. Um, maybe if rates drop and they bottom out and it becomes a buyer's market again soon, yeah. um, then maybe we'll luck into something. Yeah. Um, and then the seventh step is to build wealth and give to others. That feels like a really far away achievement. Mm -hmm. I very much believe in the power of personal growth and I fuel my learning with books, 
online videos, YouTube, classes. I took a class on Skillshare. I took Justin Bridges' class on money. It's called Modern Money Habits, Five Steps to Build the Life You Want. I'll leave the link below for you to check out that specific class. I really connected with him when he talked about getting out of debt, ways to do it, and he talked about credit cards how to change your relationship with credit cards, that if you don't have the self-control and the relationship with your credit card to be able to use it, immediately pay it and keep it in your wallet, then don't keep it in your wallet and don't use that because it is a great way to build miles and rewards and get cash back. Justin's class, uh, he has a project where you build a personal financial snapshot of your monthly expenses and your income. Great picture of your income, your expenses, your debt, your assets, all those things that are important to your financial picture at one particular point in time. The goal of looking at your personal snapshot is not to make a value judgment about yourself. The awesome thing is you get to try it out for free. You can see what I'm talking about. Click the link below. Uh, the first 1000 people to use this link from me will get a free trial of Skillshare premium membership. And you can take Justin's class and thousands of other classes for that week and decide if you wanna keep it. I think it's worth every single dollar. I bought a full year um, because it's just, there's so much up there. I'm actually considering popping up a class on Skillshare myself about paper clutter management. So many of you have been asking about that and Skillshare is an amazing platform and you have classes that are broken into chapters and you have a class project and each chapter is just a couple of minutes. Skillshare can connect you with other like-minded learners like myself. And it's, it's an online learning platform that is offering a community for curious and creative people. So check it out. So if we want to sled dog our way out of debt, what do you want? Do you want to triple down on the 9% loan? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So let's triple down on that. Okay pay 500 bucks a month on it. No, it'd be $600. Yeah. We yeah. could be out of this one in six months by mm -hmm. tripling down. I, uh, um, to be honest, I want to get out of that loan as quickly as possible because of the 9%. But the car loan, if we make $330 payments and we're able to contribute to our savings mm -hmm. and our 529s sooner, I'm okay with that. We've already paid the interest on the car loan. We're not getting out of any extra interest payments right? Mm -hmm. Because you pay your interest up front on a car loan. If somebody's out there and they know better, please correct me, but I'm pretty sure that the interest is built into your payment schedule on a car loan. So even if you pay it off early, you're still paying that interest. So there's no financial advantage to paying it off early other than freeing up income, freeing up income and being out of debt yeah. and moving that money towards something else sooner. Yeah. Like I said, like please correct retirement. me if I'm wrong, because I, I don't want to put out a uh, bum gouge for anybody out there. I don't want to be responsible for messing somebody up. Basically, our, our focus right now is protecting the savings account for emergencies, potential taxes that come up from the sale of the house, potential capital gains tax that comes up from the sale of the house, and then sled dogging our way through the rest of the debt. <laughs> um, You're welcome. That's a thing now, sled dog. You never know what comes up between now and then. We might have a unicorn house presented to us by Zillow and yeah. we buy a house mm -hmm. and it's a fixer upper of some kind and we need yep. money for that. Who knows, right? Yeah, I mean, if it's a fixer upper, I'll tell you what, pizza and beers on me, y'all come help out. You paint, build a new deck. We could uh, sheetrock, sand everything down. Mm -hmm. Good to go. Thanks for offering. That made me sweat. <laughs> because it's like making me sound like sweaty spaghetti right what? now. Because I offered everybody to come help us. <laughs> Just the thought of a fixer upper is no. like. <laughs> if I get caught in an infinite time loop, good for me. You read too much sci fi. Infinite. Right now, I'm reading The Murderbot Diaries by Martha Wells. Pretty darn good. What are you reading right now? You're reading, what do you want, book three? I'm on book five. Wow. Five of six. They're, Last they're time short. I asked, it was book three. They're short, um, but it goes fast. And then book six is another short one again. So it's a, it's a very quick series. Okay. I am reading, since you asked, um, Everything is Figure Outable by Marie Forlano. I think that's her name. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you know that Robert Heinlein was an Academy graduate? I don't even know who that is. Robert Heinlein the author of Starship Troopers. Okay. 
science, science fiction genius. I, I talk about him all the time because I read all of his stuff. Okay. Yeah, he was an academy graduate. We mm -hmm. read different books. But I talk to you about Very the books different I read genres. Often. Okay, the, what's the author that I just named? You didn't name the author. I did. You just said the other. The other you just said the title. No. What's, the, what's the author I just named? Robert. Would you watch? What about the one that I'm reading? Robert, would you? Woo. What about, what about the murder <laughs> bot author? The there's the you're on book five. Yeah. What's the What's the author's name? <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Call me out, Lucas. Touche. We're at 57 minutes. The kids have had their iPads. Wow. Time to be done. Yep. Sled dog out. <laughs>